Okay, so for the starters, uh, could you tell me about the very beginning? Um, how did Trillionaire get its start? Because I read somewhere that at some level, uh, all this goes back almost a decade. <laughs> um, maybe not quite that far, but uh, it's Trillionaire's definitely been in the works for for a long time now. Um, for me, it started uh, with um, a call from the guitar player Andrew Lacour, uh, formerly of Ken Mode and Interarma, uh, that had been doing his own thing and was working on some new music. And it was just this sort of dream project of his that he had had on the back burner and uh, finally wanted to bring it to fruition. So he contacted me and I guess it was 2016, I wanna say and um, asked, you know, gauge my interest, um, sent me the record or just a, not the record, but sent me a couple uh, tracks he had uh, pre-proed and it just, it just floored me right away. I, I immediately knew that there was really something special on the table. So I ended up moving down to Richmond, Virginia um, and we spent a few years putting together and tracking the record and it was still some time before we found Rene, um, but that was that was the early genesis of it. It was uh, it was largely, I think, Andrew's by by Andrew's will. This uh, this this manifested. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, I guess you know my my involvement came also much much later. Um, I was asked a couple of times to. Uh, I guess round out the lineup uh, because we were trying to do uh, the band was trying to play live and yeah so that's how I ended up in the mix uh, so that there's actually a you know a whole lot more story and history before that point so um, which Phil can <laughs> can elaborate on <laughs> if I have to yeah there's a it's been a lot of shuffling and I guess reshuffling of members so at, at this point um you know ha half of the personnel on the album are no longer in the picture and and I'm not on the album myself <laughs> but you know the core of the band is uh, you know does remain basically uh Andrew Phil and Renee <clears throat> yeah how Renee how was it for you to join the band and well uh, and Continuing from that, uh, how is it to finally, well, all of this finalizes now at a time like this as an album? It was uh, interesting. I had never played professionally. Uh, I'd dabbled in music for years, but never uh, as my primary focus. And I had met the guys several times over the course of the years through tours. Uh, they would swing by uh, through mutual friends. We would attend the same parties and things like that. So when, I believe it was Phil, you, you, uh, you heard me singing at a party once. Was that the Paris one or was that? My, I, mean, I think so. Or the or there Barcelona, was... it was one of those. We didn't know. I didn't know personally. We, you know, we we crossed paths for for years, uh, randomly in Europe. We would just, you know, through mutual friends, we, you know, Renee would just end up in these very strange locations that we did not expect to see him, and it'd just be this sort of inexplicable like pop up where he'd be there. But I didn't know he even sang for for probably the first two years um, of medium at all, let alone to the you know capacity that he has. So, you know, I didn't even really think about him uh, when we were when we were first um, searching for people. And then someone mentioned they were like, well, dude, Renee, I mean, is is insane. I mean, why haven't you talked to him yet? And I was like, what do you mean? I had no idea. So um, it just kind of uh, it just kind of came together as a statistical improbability. It presented such a challenge to me because uh, having only dipped my toe in, in the waters of, of creating music before. 
um, to have a finished product like what they gave me. What you hear on the record uh, instrumentally is exactly what I had given to me as a palette to work with. So, you know, over the course of the next few weeks, I just hunkered down and wrote and uh, I was able to, I don't want to say inject myself into it because it was already a, a finished product, but um, it, it was a tapestry that I, I relished that uh, I was able to work on. He brought it to life in a way that we knew was possible, but uh, we're becoming increasingly skeptical that someone was up to the task. So we're, we're very pleased it worked out. Yeah, and um, from the perspective of, you know, from my perspective, I um, only heard the, the final finished product with vocals and everything. So to me, it sounded like something that, you know, had to have been written, you know, with a core uh, group of people who had all of these ideas, large and small, in mind. And, uh, you know, uh, when I found out that uh, the whole record was instrumentally complete before vocals were even uh, conceptualized that like totally blew my mind because it's uh, it's so everything on this record is so intricate. <laughs> okay, yeah, the Romulus album is coming out on January twenty uh, ninth. So uh, after all these years in the making, uh, what are your own feelings on the album now that it's like ready and uh, and uh, well ready to put out to the public? Because the process was so long. You know, I mean, as any musician knows, just to even get through the mixing and mastering of a record, you have to listen to it so many times that it is the last thing you want to listen to when it's done. You know, before anyone else has heard it, you're already completely sick of it, regardless of how good it is. So, um, you know, I, I, I kind of gave my ears maybe uh, two years off of it. Uh, and then once things started picking up again and and we started kind of dusting off the all the you know the gears of our thinking about it um, and then I revisited it 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 blew me away as if I were a first time listener. Uh, I was able to really hear it with fresh ears and really um, find an appreciation for it that I had not had and I had loved it before we were able to communicate in a way that we were able to blend everyone's peak abilities, but in a way that didn't step on each other's toes um, and really allowed this very dense harmonic tapestry to, to take shape. Um, so I think I can speak for everyone when I say that uh, we are immensely proud of, of that record. I don't know of any other record that sounds like it. Um, the, the, I mean, just the, the vocal, the vocal layering alone is, is of a ambition that I don't, I, I mean, this is maybe a lofty statement, but I, I have, I don't really know that I've seen since Queen. Um, so we're very excited to, now be in this stage of the release and uh, you know interfacing with the public a bit and finally getting to to show people what we've been working on for so long. So it's uh, it's very exciting right now. Yeah. Even from you know the sort of obviously I'm, I'm more on like the label end of it. Uh, you know I'm in the band, but I'm you know not on the record. So when we decided to just kind of like you know, so to speak, put it out ourselves and uh, put it out through nefarious industries. Um, I've been busy with that kind of stuff. So even on that end, um, there's been a lot of time put in, uh, you know, I've been, we, we've had the vinyl, um, <clears throat> you know, we've had the manufactured like physical product for, you know, over a year uh, while we were like sorting things out. We were also, you know, hoping to become a live band in 2020, which obviously didn't happen. Uh, for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, you also already mentioned uh, that the artwork was ready a, a while ago already. Uh, 
I actually like it quite a bit. Uh, is there a story behind the visuals? Uh, the story is, uh, I guess, not not something too specific. I mean, this was they, someone inspired by an event in your life, but I'm not sure how deeply into that you want to go. I'm not going to venture into the specifics, but when I heard the record, for some reason, I got an Art Deco Gatsby-ish vibe. And I, I mentioned that the, some of the lyrics take on some of those uh, hues, I would say. So when we were sh uh, shooting ideas back and forth of what we would call the band or what the record would be about, um, I, I kept getting these roaring 20s visions. So based on that, we set it up with the artist. Uh, he just basically took our ideas as a mood board and ran with it. Uh, you already touched on this that, uh, well, you can't really go on tour uh, tour now that the album is uh, published. So um, how was the decision made to publish right now? Or was there like a discussion on whether to wait until things get better or how did you come to publish at uh, this time? So we needed to establish the band in some way um, before just dropping a record. Um, and we felt like we could be also, we always, you know, we've always um, wanted to be, you know, the guys, even before me, like it was intended to be a live band. This was intended to, you know, uh, to be performed. So um, that sort of became the task at hand. Like, how do we do this as a band? Um, and that was kind of the work that we began to do. And we felt like um, once we, you know, maybe have a few shows under our belt, kind of like have a, you know, an idea of what it takes to hit the road um, and can get the name out a little bit, that's when we'll put the record out. So it had been, that's like one of the, you know, several reasons it, like things were taking a while. So the record had already been on, been on hold um, for that specific reason. So when COVID happened, it sort of, uh, completely turned the tables for us. I think, I think for some artists, uh, obviously it became like a, either a hindrance or just another obstacle or they had to really re-gear because plans that were made couldn't happen. For us, it was the opposite. Knowing that we're looking at at least a year of no live activity for any bands in America, we were like, great, there's, there's actually no problem for us to put out the album now because you know other like otherwise we'd be waiting like several more years so uh it kind of uh you know flipped the whole situation around made it um less problematic if you will uh, or less uh, less uh, less risky in certain ways to just put it out and see what happens um so basically yeah as soon as as soon as covid hit we just started making release plans. <laughs> uh, okay, this is like already way too far ahead, but uh, uh, Renee, uh, you will be uh, like more involved uh, in the next album. So uh, how big impact, how much will it, to your mind, will it differ from Romulo? So which direction uh, will the band take? That's a, that's a difficult question. Um... Certainly some of the songs will be shorter. And I, I've, I've always let the, these guys bring relatively finished pieces to me before I start to tinker, but having the option of saying, why don't we try rearranging this or possibly we'll do a deceptive cadence or we'll, we'll modulate to a minor here or having that ability has been great um, because I had no, there was no option to do that with Romulus. So, but the, the record, it, it's along the same lines, just dark, um, really dealing a lot with suffering and trying to view, uh, the moon as an eye that looks at all of us. And when it's shrouded by clouds, uh, 
I, I'm digressing, I'm sorry. But what I mean is, is that it, it, it'll be along the same lines as Romulus, but maybe a little bit less sprawling. <laughs>